Hello, my name is Beth Dixon, and this is a video series based on Vicki Borlaug's PowerPoint presentation on expected value. I wish to thank Mrs. Borlaug for allowing me to use her PowerPoint to make this video, and this is the second video on expected value on, and on this PowerPoint. We will review expected value again and expected value seems to be a concept that gives students trouble. So this is a good PowerPoint for you to review this topic. The expected value is the long term average. The formula for the mean is equal to the sum of x times p of x. And if the process is done over and over again, the mean is the long term average. It is also called the expected value. That gives us that the expected value E is equal to the sum of x times p of x. In other words, the mean and the expected value have the same formula. The expected value is the long term average and is a phrase or term that we use when referring to the long term average. We have another example. Example 2. A game is played by rolling two fair dice. One die is rolled, excuse me, is red and the other is blue. It costs eight dollars to play the game. If the sum of the two dice equals seven, the player wins forty-one dollars. Otherwise, the player wins nothing. Find the expected value for the player's net winnings and interpret the results. First, we need to think about what our sample space looks like. When we roll a pair of dice, we get a number, or excuse me, when we roll a die, we get a number from 1 to 6 on the red die and a number from 1 to 6 on the blue dice. And yes, I know I've miss said all of that. So yes, I understand it was wrong, but you get the concept there. It would look, our sample space, would look like something like this. Each of these 36 different outcomes would be equally likely. We could get a 1 on the red die and a 1 on the blue die, and the sum would be 2. We could get a 6 on the red die, a 3 on the blue die, and our sum would be 9. So you could pause here and take a look at this to kind of get a better idea if you need to. The first number is the red die and the second number is the blue die. Ms. Borlaug has highlighted the numbers with a sum of 7. 1 and 6, 2 and 5, 3 and 4, 4 and 3, and 5 and 2, and 6 and 1. These numbers have a sum of 7. There are 6 out of the 36 equally likely outcomes that will have a sum of 7. The net winnings are positive if the player makes money. The net winnings are negative if the player loses money. The question asks us to find the expected value for the player's net winnings. So the player rolls the dice and only two things can happen. The player wins by rolling a 7 or the player doesn't get a 7 and gets nothing and therefore loses the $8 that he paid to play the game. So we have a probability distribution. We have two options under X and we'll need to figure out the probability of each of those. So first 
we'll talk about what happens if he wins. He pays $8 to play, he rolls a 7, and he wins $41. So he'll win 41 minus the $8 that he already paid to play. So his net winnings would be $33. The other option is that he pays $8 to play the game, doesn't roll a 7, and wins nothing. So he wins nothing minus the $8 it cost him to play and his net winnings is negative $8, meaning he loses the $8 it cost him to play. Now we need to think about the probability of rolling that 7. So if he wins the $41, he had to have rolled that 7. What is the probability of rolling a 7? Remember our sample space. There were 7 equally likely outcome, or 36 equally likely outcomes, 6 of which had a sum of 7. 6 out of the 36 have a sum of 7, so the probability is 6 divided by 36, or 0 0.1667. And yes, there is a little bit of a rounding error here, but again, it won't be important. Next, we need to figure out the probability of not winning nothing, which would be the other 30 options or 1 minus 6 out of 36, the complement of winning. So 1 minus 6 over 36, which is 0 0.8333, or 30 out of 36, the other 30 options. Either way, we still get the same decimal. This finishes our probability distribution table. And we can now find our expected value. And remember our formula is that x e equals the sum of x times p of x. Let the formula help you. And again, we can just write our numbers down as opposed to using a table for this since there's just two multiplications and adding them together. 33 times the probability of 0.1667 and negative 8 times the 0.8333, add those together, and we'll get a negative 1.1653, and again, because it's money, I will round to the nearest cent, and get a negative 1.17, or a negative $1.17. There is some rounding error here again, but that's okay. The exact answer would be negative 1.16 repeating sixes. Now we'll need to interpret the answer that we just got. The expected value is the long-term average. So if the game is played over and over again, on average the players will lose, because it's negative, $1.17 per game. Here are some exercises for you to try. And this concludes the videos on this PowerPoint. If you are a Walter State student and need additional help, you are welcome to come by and see me in the math lab in MBSS 222. Thank you.